what's up everyone now let's have a look at question six question six it was a trig functions it says here in the diagram below f of x is equals to a sine bx plus g of x which is equals to four cos x are drawn for the interval of um, x is the element of real numbers from negative 180 degrees to 180 the graph of f of x passes through this point here that's the point they're giving us 90 is to 5 and then the graph of g of x passes through point 90 is to 0 okay which is this point here okay and then they said uh, a and b are points of intersection of the graphs of g and f and therefore where a which is this point of intersection there this point of intersection here is given by those values there all right so now let's go ahead and deal with 6.1 6.1 says determine the values of a and b so something i would like to highlight here guys uh, when we are in this question is that um, things like this this is what you need to know from the basics okay from from the basics guys you need to know that f of x if it can be given in any form like this one here uh, like this one here b and then x plus or minus c uh, plus or minus d okay so basically in simple terms let me just choose one here out of this it can be given by that all right so now what you need to know you need to know that this is the amplitude and then you need to know that this is gives you the period where it's going to be 360 if it's sine and cos guys you know that the period of sine and cos is 360 that one of tan only tan it's given by 180 so in terms of the period please take note tan is going to be given by 180 divided by b only for tan okay and then also you need to know that this one here if it's a plus or it's a minus it means two things here this one if it's a plus it means uh, the graph is shifted on the right and then here the graph is shifted on the left all right and then you have got this one here which is d if d is a plus it can be a minus if it's a plus is shifted upwards if it's a minus is shifted down simple as that guys so if you know these basics therefore you shouldn't struggle with a uh, trig functions okay so with that in mind let's go to 6.1 6.1 is saying that determine the value of um, a and b so now we have a look at here the value of a and b it's on this function here okay let's go ahead and look for that a is amplitude sine b it's a period so what is the a here a amplitude refers from the x axis going to the peak of the function so this here it's our a so from there going up it gives us five all right based on the coordinates they give us there all right so now let's go look for b b now what do you do you look at your curve b in this case is equals to one why am i saying it's equals to one because the curve this is how you might need to look at it guys if a graph is drawn and then it has got this part and then it has got this part what you're looking for a period you're looking for um this if you take this part here this graph this part and then you connect it here on this one here you should have a complete cycle so now what do you do you check uh you check this part how far it is and then also this part then you add them together if they give you 360 therefore it's one if they give you 180 therefore it means b is two because 360 was divided by two so in this case here let's have a look at starting from here going there it's equals to 180 and then also starting from here 
and go in there it's equals to 180 therefore it means a complete circle or a, a complete period in this case it you is it's a 360 which um, ultimately makes b to be one all right i hope you guys understood that but i know there's many ways to kill a cat uh, maybe you can share on the comments below uh, how you would have done it therefore how would you you would have found the value of b all right moving right along let's move to uh, 6.2 6.2 the graph of g of x is shifted three units is shifted three units to the right so if it's shifted three units to the right it means this has to be positive so we know if it's positive it's going to be indicated by a minus so that when you solve for x it becomes a positive shifted to the right and and two units vertically down so two units down is going to be minus two so guys the only thing here the same way we're doing it in hyperbola and uh, uh, hyperbola and then also uh, in, in 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 if you had something that is in brackets minus something here if you were to look for this you'll say b is is equals to thank you guys b is equals to a positive number it's not going to be negative b if you were to solve for x so therefore it means it's shifted where to the right so same thing applies here if you want it to be on the right when you put it on the equation it has to be negative if you want it on the left when you put it on the equation it has to be positive so that when you move it out it's going to be negative All right so now now let's see here um, uh, vertically down from the graph um therefore we need to determine h of x so now they are saying from the graph of g of x where's g of x is that one here so four will remain four and then they are saying cos k they are saying x is shifted down is shifted to the right that is 30 and then shifted downwards minus two all right and that's how you do the shift but this you will only do guys if you remember this the basics that i talked about the initially all right so okay that's how you would deal with that one so 6.3 calculate the minimum value of 8 over g of x in an interval of 60. so now what we have here we have got 8 g of x is what is 4 cos x so therefore the minimum value in this case you will identify it by saying 8 uh, over 4 uh, which is just equals to 2 that will be your minimum value all right and then it says here that at 6.4 6.4 it says here that if if a which is the point of intersection is given by that determine the coordinates of b this one guys don't need no there's no need to kill yourself on this one you must just look at the graph here is the point of intersection here we are very close on the y value we are very close to three so i'm just going to call that 3.2 uh, then close it and then here at the bottom here you can just come here and try to read out this value you can see that it is equals to 30 something maybe 30 uh, maybe 30 something there uh, let me see what you can say um, it is equals to 36 or 38 okay just before yeah 38 i think so all right or guys what you can do is to equate the two equations then solve for x but i mean looking at the marks on this question uh, it was just uh, let me check this one it was just only two marks so i mean you wouldn't want to go there then solve for x just gonna be too long so please just read it out of, on from the graph to make life easy for yourself all right so let's move on to 6.5 okay 6.5 for what values of k will f of x have none real roots all right so now um f of x is this one it was a sine function so f of x it was given by 5 sine x okay so now on this one guys uh, where will it have non-real 
roots so what you do in this case guys you remember the disclaimer no not the disclaimer rather the discriminant okay for non-real roots real roots please go and reverse this one guys in this case now i'm just going to give you the answer to this one for which values of k so now in this case <coughs> excuse me in this case for values of k that is because uh, you know real roots needs to be greater than zero for no real roots no real roots where it won't have roots in this case all right so now the values for this one is going to be where k is uh, greater than five and then where k is less than a uh, negative five all right okay so basically you are saying yeah where above five this graph won't exist as you can see there there's no graph there all right so please go and revise this real roots non-real roots rational and irrational so please i do have a video uh, on this one guys please go have a look let me know what you think of the answer if i got it right or not all right you can leave a comment on the comment section below use uh, 6.6 .6 said use the graph to determine the values of x in the interval negative 180 and 180 for which values of x is f of x less than g so basically this one 6.6.1 .6 what are they saying they are saying for which values of x is the graph of f of x less than that of g so now in this case what do you do you look at you look at your point of intersection which is this point here and also this point there remember this point we did uh, look for it it was uh, 30 we said it's 38 and then also three point something there all right so now now if you look at the graph starting from here this one is f of x and then this one is g where is the graph of f of x less than that of g where is it below so starting from here all the way up until here this graph is less than it's only when you go above this point of intersection where now the graph of f of f x is starting to be uh, above that of g of x so now we need to give this values here so we are starting from this one here negative you can see the value there from starting from here going that side and also starting from here going backwards that side so now what are you going to say for which values of x values of x where x is greater than negative 1 and 40 34 and then also where x is less than 38 okay and that's how you would uh give this one here all right so 6.6.2 .6 this one was a little bit uh, difficult for me it said uh, f of x prime which is the derivative or the gradient of that where the, or the gradient if you multiply it with the graph of g of x you should get a positive number all right so now on this one uh guys on this one you it's either where is the gradient the gradient the gradient gas is the slope ne? you are looking at the slope so now f of x from here going uh, up until this point here this here this curve here he has got uh, let me see is it positive or negative gradient it has got a positive gradient i hope i'm not making a mistake here i think it's got a positive gradient and then when you go down it's a negative gradient here yes all right so now this is a positive gradient because you are stepping up so now what are you saying here we're saying if you were to multiply this gradient by any value here by any value of g of x that you should have here therefore you should have a positive number all right by looking at this what do you look at you look at the x intercepts which is this one here uh, okay the intercept is this one 
for G. Now this is the intercept of F for G. This is the int X intercept and then this is the X intercept. So now if you look at these two points here, if you look at these two points here and then you multiply by this gradient here. At these two points, the graph of G of X is above. So if it's above the X axis, all the values here, they are positive. All right. There is some somebody I tried to explain this and said he said anything above the x axis is above the ocean and anything below it's negative is below the ocean. So now if you are above the ocean, you get a positive answer. And if you look at during this period, our gradient is positive. So now you can uh, say for values of x where x is greater than negative 180 and where x is less than 180. So please guys double check this one for me. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if I explained it properly. Leave a comment. If you don't understand, let me know and then we will do a separate video just to explain this part. Let me see you on the next upload where we'll be doing question 7.